Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Bomber Crew. Now, this episode is a pretty special one, actually. So, we have uh, very recently decked our, our aircraft in standard, standard camo from what the Lancaster would have had back in the day, um, because we are about to undertake Operation Chastise. Now, we have flak operation down and enemy armor down for this mission, um, and as the general there says, we'll be knocking out a dam that supplies an enemy with hydroelectric power station. Uh, to do this, we'll be dropping an experimental bouncing bomb. You'll be flying low and facing enemy AA guns, so give it your best shot. Now, this episode's going to be a little bit different. Normally, I would skip. I would, I would click begin mission like I'm just about to, and I would skip ahead to the action. I'm not going to do that this time, because there's some background that I feel needs to be covered. Operation Chastise, if you don't know, is the historical... Um, event known to many as the Dam Busters, and you can see the bomb underneath our plane there. And I want to give you a little bit of background about the Dam Busters as we set off. Just quickly have a look. How far do we have to go? Yeah, it's a really, really long old flight, so we've got plenty of time to talk about this. Now, uh, we'll get ourselves up in the air, and when we can, come on, anytime soon. There we go. We'll raise the gear up and put ourselves on a lean mixture of fuel to give ourselves enough time to get there. So that gives us a ridiculous, that's like 37, 37 minutes of fuel is, is crazy amounts. Um, right, let's get heading in that direction. Now, Downbusters mission, it happened. We'll do a bit, few facts to start you off. 16th to the 17th of May, 1943. So it's sort of, uh, it's sort of midway through the war, getting close to the end. We're starting to see the end in sight. Um, and it was from RAF Scampton Air Base back there. Uh, there were, 20? 20? No, that's wrong. 19, in fact. Alvo Mark III Lancaster bombers that have been fitted out like this to carry these bouncing bombs. And they all set off from RAF Scampton on the 16th of May, and they returned. Not all of them did. Some of them returned on the 17th. To give you a bit of background, though, why this is important. We're currently heading towards the Ruhr Valley in Germany, over here. Now, the Ruhr Valley is important because it was the sort of center for German in industry and production at that time. Um, they they had other industry scattered throughout the country, of course, but that was the largest concentration, so it had been marked as a strategic target from the beginning of the war anyway. Um, there were three hydroelectric dams um, across two rivers. Oh, there we go, let's update the heading. And they were marked because they, they were obviously heavily defended, because the Germans knew they were a strategic target as well. Um, but they were holding back all this water. They were producing electricity for the factories. And they were also water filtration plants. So they were producing clean water for the people of Germany to to drink. And losing that is, is quite a big deal. Um, oh dear, are we going to get attacked straight away? Okay. Uh, we'll just hope that they don't interfere too much with us. Are we going straight for the target? We are. That's good. Okay. Radio for recon and see what turns up on the, on the sites. Um, now... If, you, if you're saying, well, it's a huge strategic target, why, why were there not more fights fought around this area? Well, it's pretty simple, really. Oh, what's that? New like Okay, we've got our report. Uh, oh, there's a lot of stuff there. We're going to try to fit through the middle of this. Although, flak is down, so that might be easier than I thought. We'll focus up. Make sure we get these guys. Um, yeah, so, why were there not loads more fights happening around this sort of area throughout the war? Why have we not heard more about it? Why was this just one attack? Um... Well, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, strategic bombing wouldn't have worked. There's too much AA on the ground around that area to get a good accuracy on a straight bombing run with normal bombs. It just wouldn't have worked. The planes would have been shot down before they even got close. So. Oh, enemy. That's good. Good news. And there's one more down. And it should be get the last one down in a second. We'll just focus up. Make sure we get them. There we go. Lovely stuff. We'll reload you while you're there. Um, and update our heading again. So yeah, um, it's too difficult for a standard bombing run. There was a plan put in place to... Oh, let's see, what's everybody doing? Uh, more enemy fighters spotted, I'll just auto attack them. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, there was a plan put in place to drop a 10-ton bomb from 40,000 feet. And that would have worked, but technology at the time... I mean, you can see from the state of my plane, this can't fly at 40,000 feet with a 10-ton bomb. Are you mad? That's not going to work. They can barely hold itself in the sky. That being said, I have seen this thing full of holes and it still flies, so... Uh, I mean, they don't come out of the sky easy, but it wasn't powerful enough to fly at 40,000 feet with a 10-ton bomb. No way. Um, so that's off the table. And 
you can't torpedo it. There's there's torpedo nets in place. You can't get a submarine that close to Germany anyway. Um, it's just not happening. Oh, this is not good. Half of you are remaining already. Oh, dear. Um, there we go. All sorted. Lovely. Um, yeah, you're just, you're just not getting any of these things anywhere near the dam. It's just not happening. There's too much... Too many defences. Um, it's just too difficult. So the British engineers, being as mad bonkers as they are, came up with this idea of a bouncing bomb that you see below me. Uh, let's tag up these enemies over here. Oh, they're heavy fighters. Uh, might be a bit difficult. Um, I'm going to make sure we've got our front gunner on our ventral turret, just in case they try and get below us. There we go. Um, they invented this bouncing bomb that we've already seen. We know how it works. It bounces along the water like a skimming stone. Um, it's actually designed to hit the dam, stop, sink all the way to the bottom, and then explode when it's at the seabed, using the shock wave of the water to cause maximum effect. And of course, if you explode and make a hole lower down, then the uh, the resulting water that comes through is going to be a lot more and a lot faster. So it's a bigger effect. Um, but these bombs, I mean, we're traveling at low altitude at the moment, but to give you an idea of how low that actually is, that's at 60 feet off the floor. That's insane. That is literally insane. I'm just going to focus everybody up while we're doing this. Um, it's literally insane. It's mad. 60 feet off the floor is so, so low. We're going to get our guy forwards into the bomb bay, because we can actually see the actually see the dam already. Have, we, have I been waffling for that long? Blimey, I have. Ha! Huh. Okay. Uh, start the bombing run low altitude. That's all fine. Don't leave low altitude these days. Um, yeah. 240 miles an hour, 60 feet off the floor. That is mental. As a result, some of the planes didn't make it back because they were flying so low. Um, 19 Lancasters set off. Oh, let's make sure <laughs> I'm actually playing the game while I'm doing this. Um, the bomb bay. Oh, I don't need to open it. It's always open. Uh, we'll select the bomb and we'll just be ready for this. Okay, um, 19 Lancaster set off with 19 bombs. 10 of those bombs were released, 7 hit the target. So those other 3, they either they flew too wide, or they bounced over the top of the dam because they were released at the wrong time. Timing's everything with these things. Um, 3 of them actually breached the dams, and only 2 of them did enough damage to cause serious like flooding to the actual region. Um, and only 11 managed to make it back, 8 were shot down. That's, that's mental. Absolutely mental. Oh, and we're about to see why. Um, we've only got one shot at this, so I'm going to concentrate for a moment. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, and release. Nice. Right, let's go. Let's go. Let's leave. Oh, no. Have I? I've... Yeah, we got it. Nice. Nice one, lads. Nice one. We did well. Um, right, so we're going to return to base. We've done this. We don't need to... Ooh could get the photo. Yeah, let's go get the photo. We've got good perks on at the moment, so we can go get that. No problem. We do have some lights on us, actually. That's a bit annoying. Hey, stop shining your lights at me. Um, my favourite thing, so I, I mentioned that there were a few crews that didn't make it back, and that is a sad fact, but that's the reality of war, I'm afraid. Um, the funny thing about that is, though, one of the crews that did make it back didn't actually even release their bomb. They, uh, what happened was, oh, are they coming in? Are they all below me? Okay, let's, uh, let's put Findlay. I want you on the bottom down here for a second. <laughs> things are getting, things are getting horrible. Um, there we go. Let's mark this guy up before he does anything too dangerous. And our bomber, we're going to take a photo of this airbase. Lovely stuff. Right, let's get ourselves back now. Um, yeah, one of the crews made it back with their bomb. They didn't even release the bomb. They didn't, they didn't even see the target. They reported... Uh, we're going to swap into lean fuel mixture while we can. And auto-tag everybody. Lovely stuff. Right, let's reload you. And front gunner, you can get on the top gun. Actually, no, you can come over here. I want Findlay on the top gun. I want Button to get on the bottom gun down there. How are you doing on ammo? Uh, back needs reloading. Okay. Whoa, Scully! Taking so much damage there. That's ridiculous. Okay. How are we? How are we doing? Not great, I'm afraid. I'm gonna have to go defensive with this. Might need to switch to boost to actually get us out of Germany. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to boost and get us out there. Right. Oh, these aren't taken up. That's probably why we are doing really badly against them. Right. 
there we go. Anybody in need of anything? Uh, we're going to reload you now, and I think that should be okay. I'm going to get Turtle to go back and heal up Scully, uh, just while we can. Okay, and I'm going to focus up the bottom gun. Out of ammo there, but it's okay, we reloaded you, and I think that should be all sorted. Right, so we've got more coming in on front. And we'll correct our heading. Lovely. So, back to the history lesson. Um, <laughs> Uh, so one one crew did actually report that they couldn't find their target due to the mist, um, which I find quite funny. They uh, they went straight back to Airbase Scampton and landed with their bomb still armed and still activated. Uh, in my opinion, they probably chickened out, but honestly, I'm I'm not gonna really blame them. I I wouldn't want to do what they did. So I mean, uh, fair enough, I suppose. Um, <laughs> The, the raid itself they had quite an effect. It did actually put the Germans back by eight months. It took them eight months to repair all the damage and get everything back going. It didn't just have the effects that were detailed in the mission um, of what they were trying to achieve. It also uh, stopped... Oh, who needs a reload? You need a reload, don't you? Right. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it destroyed loads of farmland as well. So the Germans had a bit of a food crisis after that as well, which is, again, it's good for the war. Um, unfortunately, it does have a human cost, but so does everything. Um, when you are making decisions in war, uh, where are we? So the raid leader, this is a thing. He's this dude. This guy is insane. He was the first into the fight. He dropped his bomb. It bounced. It. I believe it didn't do any major damage. It actually missed. But he decided his plane is going to stay around. It's gonna, he stuck around. He stayed there and continued to draw the AA fire away from his fellow planes. And it's probably because of him that a few of those crews did actually make it back home safe and sound. So that guy, that guy is nuts. I mean, to to want to go into that hell in the first place and then stay there, that guy's got some insane amount of bravery. Um, of course, I was talking about the human cost. Um, unfortunately, six, 1,600 civilians did die as a result of this attack, and it wasn't as if uh, the military didn't know this was going to happen. It's uh, one of the unfortunate consequences of war. Um, oh, I need to get Turtle back pretty sharpish and these guys needs to re-ammo up and we've got to put out that fire on that engine before we go down um, there are more planes in the sky so I'm going to stick on an auto tag in a second right where is my auto tag right there we go that's good so there were 1,600 civilians uh, lost as a result of this 600 of which were German civilians and 1,000 were forced labourers mainly Soviet um, but really, what I wanted to gain from this, and what I wanted to show, was the, uh, what is, what's wrong here? Are we out of fuel? It's gone to lean. Oh, I see, we're running low on fuel. Okay. Yeah, what I, what I really wanted to glean from this was three things. One, respect for British engineering, man. This is an impossible problem that they were presented with. We can't torpedo it, we can't use any of the technology of today. Think up something that will sort this out. And they did. They came up with a bouncing bomb, which is the most mad solution I could possibly even think of to this problem. I'm just insane. And the fact that it works is even more bonkers. Um, but hey, it's British engineering. We've got a history of doing things like this. Uh, second thing, respect for the bravery of soldiers in war. They do what they're told to, they don't question why, and a lot of the time they know that they may not make it back. And that takes some insane amount of courage. And no matter who they're fighting for, it we should respect them for wanting to do that to protect what they believe is right. Thirdly, respect the value of human life. 1,600 people lost their lives as a result of this because people at the top couldn't agree and because they had opposing views and there was awful evil in the world. I'm not saying that it was right what they did. It was necessary. And it shouldn't devalue the lives that were taken. But on that rather sombre note, we are about to land again. It was a, success, a successful mission today. We blew up the dam. No uh, no pixelated civilians were killed because I believe these towns are completely uninhabited. Um, and fortunately, this is just a video game. So with that, I think we'll end this episode off and I'll thank you everybody for listening. And I hope that I didn't just butcher the story of Operation, da Operation Chastise and as you would know it, the Dam Busters. Um, on a more on a lighter note, this of course is just a game, and we have completed this mission. We've completed this chapter of the story. We've completed chapter four of what looks like eight. We're actually halfway through. We limped back home, 
much like some of those planes in the uh, in the actual war did. Um, we managed to get our recon photo, gave us an extra five grand. It's, uh, it's good. And possibly some people leveled up as well. So it's been good for us in this game. What can I say? If you were interested by anything that I talked about just now, um, I'd highly recommend you go and look up The Dam Busters. It is an incredible story. Uh, the film of it is a little bit old. It's been dramatized and it's... It, it's well it is what it is and it exists but it, it's not the best depiction i wouldn't say um if you wanted to get a more accurate description i'd say read the reports from the time uh i'll even just read wikipedia that's where i got most of the information for this from um but yes we are going to change our aircraft we're gonna we're gonna end on a slightly higher note for all of you that i've managed to depress out there with the ending um we are going to we're gonna buy a dinghy that's what we there we go I've just spent two and a half grand on a dinghy. There we go. If that's not if that's not a comedy ending to this, I don't know what it's. No, we're going to change our we're going to change our paint to so be neon disco for the next one. So, I will see everybody next time. Um, thank you for watching. It does mean a lot to me. And if you've enjoyed this episode and you feel you've learnt something, then leave a like down below. Um, and of course share it with everybody. If you're new to my channel and uh, you want to see more, I don't always do these uh, war stories. I, I, I haven't done a single other one. This is my first. I may not ever do another one again. Um, but do subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell for notifications to new videos when they are released. And I will see you in the next episode of Bomber Crew, which is hopefully a bit more lighter and jovial. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.